Okay, so welcome to How to Prepare Your Shop for the holidays. Now, I know you guys are here because you really want to get some information about how you can prep your shop for the holidays and tips that you can act on starting today. And that's exactly what I want to give you. A couple of things to go over with how this workshop will run. The workshop itself will be all presentation style, meaning it will be a PowerPoint. You will hear the sound of my voice and I will be going over all the great information with you. Take notes, um, make sure you follow me on my social channel so you know when I upload this video so you can see the replay. We'll go over how to follow me at the very end of together. But I know you guys have a lot of questions. So there is a Q&A button and I will actually activate that now. However, I will not answer those questions until our very end of the class, which will be about an hour from now. So as you have those questions pop up, type them in the Q&A chat. You should see that now. If everyone can let me know if you can see the Q&A box, it should now be available for you. Awesome. Make sure you put those questions in there. Make sure you are specific. There are a lot of things we're going to cover. So when I come back to answer those questions for you, I want to be able to actually accurately answer them. So be very specific in your questions so I know how to answer them at the end of our time together. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Once I share my screen, I'm going to ask you to actually let me know that you can see it. So give me one second. And I'm gonna get that playing from the start. Okay. So I'm gonna hit a quick, quick escape so that I can see that you guys can actually see the presentation of the screen. So let me go back over here. Okay, can everyone see the screen? Is the chat box the same as the Q&A? The chat box is different. The chat box will say chat, and basically you're like chatting back and forth between yourselves or with me. I won't be able to see the chat box because I'm getting ready to take my whole screen into presentation mode. The Q&A box will say Q&A. That's where you drop your questions. If you have a question pertaining to anything that I'm covering, drop those in the Q&A, and it should be at the top. Uh, there should be a tab at the top where it says chat box and Q&A. Then at the very end of our time together, I'm gonna to go back in and answer those Q&A questions. So don't put your questions in the chat box. That is only if you're talking amongst yourselves and you guys wanna be interactive, that is amazing. I will have you type stuff in the chat box when I ask you to describe something for me. But you want to make sure that if you have a question about the material, it's in the Q&A box and I will go over the Q&A at the very end of our time together, okay? All right, uh, someone is saying they don't have sound. Once again, let's do a quick test. Can everyone hear me? Okay, awesome. Can everyone see the presentation slide that I'm about to open up into the full screen? And to get the difference between those, say, yes, I can see your screen. Uh, okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's go ahead and dive right in. If there's someone that needs help, I'm going to rely on you guys to help them out because, again, I will not be able to see my chat when I go into full-on presentation mode. I will not be able to see your Q&A until after I come out of presentation mode. Awesome. Let's get started. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into our presentation for the day. So welcome to the workshop. In the chat, most of you have already typed in what you sell, your workshop name, your current city and state, and how you heard about the class. If you haven't done that, go over to the chat and give those answers right in the chat. I won't see them right now, but everyone else will. And that'll give you guys an opportunity to connect with each other, see where you guys are coming from, what city, state, country, what you sell, what your shop is. It's just a way for us to connect with each other, which is a huge part of the Etsy community. 
So here's a little bit about myself. I'm the owner of Expressions Bracelets and also Serata Speaks. Expressions Bracelets is my product-based business and Serata Speaks is my service-based business where I help small business owners grow their business. So for the past decade, I have had Expressions Bracelets, and it has been an amazing opportunity. I will say this, had it not been for Etsy, I would not be a full-time entrepreneur. So although I don't sell a lot on Etsy anymore, I've transitioned to my own shop. Etsy is a community that I believe in and that I support and that I want to see other small business owners grow with because I believe wholeheartedly in what Etsy can do for your business. This here is a dated, very dated Etsy shop. The reason I keep this is because it is one of my treasured moments on Etsy. Again, I've been on Etsy for over 10 years. This was the particular 30 days where I first hit the five-digit mark, meaning I made over $11,000 in revenue from Etsy within 30 days. This is what was the game changer for my business. It let me know that I had a product that people could sell. I had a platform that I could sell it on and that I could actually continue to grow this business. So I keep that there as a reminder for anyone to let them know that yes, Etsy does work and Etsy is a community where you can actually grow your business. So here's some of the things we're gonna be going over today. We're going to go through Prep for the holidays. We've already done an introduction. You should be popping in and out of the chat to introduce yourself. We're going to talk about seasonal marketing strategies, customer service during the holidays, holiday trends, and trends by category. We're going to do a quick recap, and then we're going to dive into Q&A because the Q&A is the meat of what you're going to get from this workshop. I'm going to present the information. You're going to type in your questions in Q&A, and I'm going to circle back and answer those for you. One thing I want to remind you is your success is defined by you. Yes, I showed you a screenshot of a $11,000 month. However, that's not something that's completely typical for most Etsy shop owners. You need to set the bar for what you need to make in your business, not what someone else has made or not what you think you should make, but what you can actually make in your business based off of, off of historical data, how you're growing your business, how you're marketing your business. I would say that most small business owners want to at least be making somewhere between one to five thousand dollars or two to five thousand dollars on the Etsy shop per month. That's a good goal to start shooting for. If you're already hitting that, congratulations. If you're working your way up to that, keep going. Your success is ultimately defined by you and you decide what it is that you need. So let's dive into prepping your shop for the holidays. We're going to talk about inventory, keywords, videos and photos, shipping and shop policies. As you begin to think about your inventory, the key thing that I want you to remember is there are different categories in which your inventory will fall into. Because a lot of you are hand making these items, it is very important to set the dates of when you're able to ship these items out and make sure they're accurate. Keep in mind, international takes longer. Domestic is a shorter time period. However, you have to factor in how long it takes you to make these items. So when you're going through your inventory, I would suggest having a small amount of ready to ship items from some of your most popular selling items or your best sellers. And here's why. You're going to get a lot of last minute shoppers at the beginning of December. They're going to want their items and they're going to want it quick. If you are able to turn around that item and ship it to them um, or ship it out next day, not necessarily ship it to them overnight, but be able to get it to the post office a day or two after they order, that's also going to help you with increasing your sales because you're going to have ready to ship items. And I also like to put ready to ship when I'm able to categorize it on uh, shipping times, ship next day, ships within 24 hours, ships within one to three days. Have that ready-made, ready-to-ship inventory so you can begin to still capitalize on those last-minute shoppers. Keywords are hugely important. We know with any type of online e-commerce or even any type of online business, you have to have the keywords in order to be found, in order to be discovered, to actually show up where people are searching. So let's talk about some of those techniques when it comes to your keywords on 
and off of Etsy. So the first thing with uh, keywords, number one, understand with Etsy, you're not just optimizing your shop on Etsy. You're also optimizing it for Google search. So every time you put a keyword in your shop title, in your announcement, in your description, in your title, that is also going out to Google to help categorize what your shop is, what's it about, and what you sell. So use those keywords to your advantage. But you want to look at it from a shopper's perspective. I know we like to title our, our, our items with these really cool titles, but you want to keep it simple and actually go off what the shopper may call your item. For example, if I have these beautiful gold hoop earrings that I want to title Lil Trendy Earrings, no one's going to search by that. A shopper is going to search by gold hoop earrings. So keep in mind that your titles and tags are reflective of the season, but they're also reflective of your ideal customer and how they might search. Number two, you want to lead with the most relevant and seasonally appropriate phrases first. For example, gift for stepmom and then tell them what it is. Teach your Christmas present and then tell them what it is. Lead with those most relevant and seasonally appropriate keyword phrases to begin with. And that's going to be in your titles as well as your tags. Add the relevant categories and attributes. I know sometimes we don't want to go through and fill out all that information, but that's actually playing into helping to optimize your listing. I know you guys hear about SEO all the time. Every opportunity you can get to optimize your listing, you want to take advantage of that. So definitely use your categories and attributes. Keep in mind, and I want to go back to this and make a little side note. When you are categorizing those listings, make sure that if this item is specifically for a specific holiday, then choose the holiday. But if this is an item that can be used as a gift for any holiday, don't tag it as Thanksgiving gift or Thanksgiving. It should only be tagged that if it can only be used during Thanksgiving. For example, this cute little item you see in the picture, I would put that as a Christmas decor because the theme is Christmas, because typically someone's only going to use it during Christmas. But if there were earrings that could be a Christmas gift, but also could be a birthday gift or a Valentine's Day gift, I wouldn't tag it as Christmas themed, but I would just leave it as a gift. You want to write enticing listing descriptions and keep an SEO in mind. Keep in mind the first 160 to 500 characters tend to be the most important to external search engines like Google and Bing and all those other search engines where people are searching for items. In your descriptions, you also want to make sure that you have things like the size, the dimension, the colors, ordering instructions if, it, if it's relevant to your listing. Use that opportunity to give as much information as possible because as shoppers are shopping for the holiday season, they are a little bit more detailed and that's going to help you not have to answer so many conversations asking the same question because you've actually put it in your description. And even if someone asks a question and it's in the description, just copy and paste that description. That's a quick reply to say, here's all the information that you need. You also want to think globally. When you're running out of tags to actually use for your listing, think globally. For example, a sweater in the United States is called a jumper in the United Kingdom and a pullover in Germany. So right there, you have some extra tags that you can add into your listing that work on a global level. Make sure you're double checking that your de default shop language matches the language you are most fluent in. The translation tool will take care of the rest. And since sizes aren't translated, it's best to make sure the measurements are in your item. As we're looking at this beautiful ornament, obviously we know it's not as big as it might appear on the screen, but we also don't know how small it is. 
So it would be advantageous for the seller to describe what size it is, but also use a picture to use a size scale. So I would put that ornament next to a more commonly used uh, uh, item like a coffee mug or something that someone says, oh, now I get the size of that. Finding the right keywords takes time, but make sure you're checking your shop stats in order to identify which keywords are actually working well for you. So here's a quick keyword activity, and I'm going to come out of my screen for just a second. You'll still be able to see the screen, but I want you to take a quick second and in the chat, not in Q&A, but in the chat, I want you to start typing in some keywords that you may use to describe those earrings. Just start typing them in for me. You can think of them as tags. You can think of them as part of a title. I love it. Pumpkin, absolutely. Fall earrings, yes. Halloween earrings, dangle earrings. Yes, yes, yes. Autumn, I love this. I love this. Halloween gift. Yes, yes, yes. So these are really amazing things. Now, let's look at another one to see what might be the keywords. How about this one? Look at this one and type in the keywords that you may use to actually describe that item. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And the cool thing is, I'm not sure if those are soaps or what, but they're so cute. Yeah, it is soap. It is soap. Now, here's another quick, quick one. Think about who this item may be good for. How would you describe the person that this item might be good for? Soap lover, soap enthusiast, um, gifts for mom. I love the guest bathroom soap. Yes, housewarming gift, host gift, gift for mom, care gift. Oh, you guys are awesome. I love this. I love it, love it, love it. We're going to do one, one more, one more. Cleaning supplies. That's a good one. Most people wouldn't think of that. How about that one? It's so cute, but how would you how would you describe that? What keywords would you use if that was your item to use as tags within your listing? How would you describe that? Out, outdoor decor, I like it. Wacky wreath, cool. Pom-poms, yes, yes, yes. Colorful pom-pom decor, yes. Okay, you guys have gotten the idea of how this works. These are the same things you're going to do with your own items. You're going to make yourself a little spreadsheet or a Word document and start thinking of as many terms as possible to actually describe your item. Here's another thing. Look at other shops that sell things that are similar to yours and see what words they are using in their shop. Not to copy their listing, not to copy their title, but to get your creative juices flowing to really look for those keywords that might be relevant for you. So video is king. If you are not creating video content for your product-based business, I would highly encourage you to do that. Video is where people actually get to connect with the item. They see it. They can actually visualize where it should be. They can visualize the size. They see it being held. Video content is king. As a side note, I will be teaching a TikTok marketing for Etsy sellers next week. So make sure you sign up for that because I'm going to be talking all about video content and how to create the video content for your business. So I recommend video and I recommend just little quick two to three second videos that you can capture of your items so that you can add those to your listings and also use those for social media marketing. Things you want to cover like size, color, materials to use, all of that can be displayed within a video listing. Increase your visibility with Explore. With Explore, which is an app, you can create and upload video posts that will be featured in a feed or in its own tab in the Etsy shopping app. This is an amazing way to increase the visibility of your shop, especially during this very busy holiday season. So whether you're recording videos of yourself or your products or you're making your products, personality is key. So make sure you are engaging this is a great way to start playing around with how to create videos that you can utilize on Pinterest, Instagram, Reels, TikToks. 
Let's talk about shipping. Now, this is probably one of the most overlooked parts of running a business when it comes to making sure the operations of your business is running smoothly. As you head into the holiday season, make sure you understand your processing time, your cutoff dates of when you will no longer be able to accept orders and the process of if I accept this order now, then you'll have to pay priority to get it before Christmas. Make sure all those details are clear in your shop announcement when you're communicating with your shoppers on social media or in your newsletters. Be very clear about this is our cutoff date for international, this is the cutoff date for domestic, and this is the cut cutoff date for priority shipping domestically. Make sure you go in and update those shop policies. If you are unclear of how to do your shop policies, I always invite any seller to go to my page, Expressions Bracelets, my shop, look at my shop policies, get some ideas of what's in there. Look at the terms that I'm using in order to help the seller know what my policies are, what I will return, what I won't return, what our shipping turnaround time is. It's important to have that in your shop policies. Now, you want to make the most of the increase in traffic. So keep in mind, 13 million new shoppers joined Etsy from October to December of 2020. Now, we all know during that time, that was obviously during the, the height of the pandemic, if you will. And of course, there are more people online. A lot of people have not really gone back to in-person shopping as much as we would like them to, which means the online Shopping is still going to be a big money maker this holiday season. So make sure that you are responding to your messages. If you don't have an auto responder set up, please set that up for the holiday season so that it will automatically respond to the person that has an inquiry in case you can't get back to them within that 24 hour period. Yes, Etsy is encouraging shoppers to offer that $35 or more free shipping guarantee. Make sure that within your pricing, and this is something that I teach my clients all the time, that you are pricing to be able to absorb the cost of shipping. If my item really max out between me making it labor costs and a quick markup, at $35, I sell it at $35, someone buys it at $35, and then I've got to pay for shipping, then I'm losing money. I'm down to $29 now. You want to make sure that these items are priced so that it absorbs the cost of that $4 or $5 shipping. Let's talk about seasonal marketing strategies. We're going to run through social media, some trends, ad campaigns, communication, coupons and sales, Etsy update feeds, and a little bit about Explore. So let's talk about some marketing tips, some quick do's and don'ts, because there's no one size fits all when it comes to marketing. When it comes to social media, here are some things you want to keep in mind. Consider sharing photos of your items in holiday scenes or with wintry elements. That just simply means the photo you see to the right doesn't really have any holiday feel to it. So they could simply set that same setup up and throw in some little ornaments around the bottom or some greenery or a little mini Christmas tree in the background. You want your shopper to get in the mood of shopping. You guys know how it feels when you walk into a store and they got the Christmas music, they got the Christmas candies and the big blow up Santa. You're like, yes, I'm ready to shop. Let's do this. You want to create that same vibe online. You want your shoppers to really buy into this is the holiday season. I'm ready to go out and get these great gifts. Now, when you go into to retake these photos, just as a quick side tip, only retake photos of your best sellers. If you don't already have holiday themed pictures from some of your best sellers, don't try to reshoot your entire inventory. Just a few, a few so that you can use those pictures on social, maybe in your banner and things like that. Don't try to reshoot everything. Look for those relevant tags to get discovered. Hashtag holiday 2022, holiday gift guide 2022. These are things that you can also use on, well, you can use it in any social platform. You can use these uh, same words within your titles as well. But more importantly, doing social, you have to hashtag and use keywords in order to be discovered. 
Now, I know many of us do not like going live. We love to stay behind the scenes and create our beautiful items. But going live, even if no one shows up, will help you begin to break out of the shell and learn to go live more throughout the year, not just leading up to the holiday season. But here's a little trick. Let's say you want to go live and you're afraid that no one's going to show up. Well, you invite family and friends. No one knows their family and friends. Get them to hop on live and at least throw up some lights and do some engagement so that you get the practice of going live. I promise you, it works. Make sure you're using Instagram Reels and TikTok to share all of that great content that you are creating. Some quick trends to talk about. Um, you've got trend reports that are available to you via Etsy that go over fall and holiday trends. The fellow sellers in the community space, we've got a lot of different opportunities right here in order to capitalize on the trending season. Refresh your shop banner. Make sure that you are choosing listings that you want to promote on Etsy that may already be great sellers. You don't want to buy an ad for something that you're not quite sure how it's going to do. If an item is already reaching audiences and doing well, use the ads to reach an even bigger audience and continue to sell that item. That's what we're talking about with the ad campaigns. I like to tell my clients that if you're going to start out with ads, start out with about 3 to $5 a day for 30 days. See how it works for you. Do not put your entire shop on the ad campaign. Only put one to five items that you can actually track and measure whether or not your return on investment is going to make sense for you. As a quick reminder, if you have any questions, drop those in the Q&A and I will get to those at the very end of our time together. Communication is key, whether it be in any type of relationship, personal or professional, and definitely online. Make sure that your information is clearly conveyed in your shop announcement, in your message to buyers, in your shop policies. If you don't know where these things are, get online and Google, where's my message to buyer for Etsy? Where's my shop announcement? The information is out there free of charge for you to be able to make sure your shop is set up properly to answer any question that a customer may have. Coupons and sales are another great way to market your shop, but more importantly, to increase return buyer. As you're getting all this traffic coming in for the holiday, most shop owners will experience a sharp decline January and February, because all these shoppers have come in, they've gotten their amazing gifts, and they've gone on to something else. How do I retarget them? How do I get them to come back to my shop? Give them a reason to come back. Send them a thank you coupon. And you can set that up as well in your Etsy shop. So whether you've just made your first sale or you're an established seller who's been around for years, Etsy updates can help you grow your buyer base and bring back shoppers to your shop. Make sure that you are having, you're encouraging people to favorite your shop, to favorite items. That way, if something goes out of stock and it becomes in stock again, if they favorite that item or your shop, they get a quick notification that, look, this is in the shop again. There's only one left. Here's a coupon for this item. Use all of the features to your advantage in order to grow your shop. Uploading videos to explore. Again, an app by Etsy that will help you to create video content for your business. Explore videos can include sound and can be anywhere from two seconds to three minutes long. If you're going to use longer video, make sure that it is very, very, very enticing. Otherwise, you're going to lose your viewers. So I like to stay in that sweet spot of seven to nine seconds if I'm doing anything that I really want to get across my message. Customer service during the holiday season. Let's talk about communication, meeting buyer expectations, seller reputation, preparing for the unexpected, and consistency. So you want to build buyer loyalty this season. I like to build my customer base. And if you're building a customer base off of Etsy, you can also include different marketing material, have them sign up for your newsletter. We all know that you cannot use a customer's email without their consent. So make sure you are getting that consent Consent, because we want to make sure that we are abiding by Etsy's policies and procedures. 
So let's walk through a few customer service priorities for running your shop on Etsy. Be very clear about what your shop does and does not do. That can be established in your shop policy, in your shop announcement. Be very clear in your frequently asked questions, what your shop does return or does not return, and when you will accept returns. Here's a pro tip that I actually told you about a little bit ago. Make sure you have your autoresponder set to on and that you have a few saved replies to use as quick responses to the inquiries that you will get during the holiday seasons. Basically, your saved replies are answers to the most frequently asked questions that you've experienced throughout the year. For example, I used to do hand-stamped, and a lot of people would ask questions about how do I personalize it? How long does it take? What is the material? And I would have a list of the most common questions I've been asked, and I would create quick save replies so that whenever that came through, I could quickly answer the question just by a click of a button. Prioritize clear and timely communication. Use your listing photos to convey to the customer what this item is, how it will be shipped, what color it is, what size it is. A listing video is definitely encouraged. And all the other information that's written should go into your listing description. These are your shop policies. This is where the customer is going to go if they have some major questions or they're going to just message you automatically. But this is amazing. You want to make sure that you are actually filling this information out. Etsy makes it really easy for you. Most of the things are the question is there. You just have to type in the answer. Why not take advantage of that? You also want to follow through. If I say I'm going to ship something in one to three days, I don't want my customer having to come back and ask why hasn't this shipped because it's day four. As a matter of fact, I like to set my times a day later than what I know I can do. So if I know I can ship next day, I'm going to set my times to one to three days. So that way, when it's shipped out on day two, they are so excited. They are willing and ready to give you an amazing review about that because you did something that was beyond their expectations. So you want to under promise, but over deliver. If it takes me three to five days to make an item, then I'm going to bump that up an extra day. So anything that happens, I still get that item out within the time frame that my customer expects. Make sure again that you are sharing your estimated delivery dates. That's automatically done for you just by having your shipping profile set up. Etsy makes it very easy for you. You put in your shipping information, where it's shipping from, and they're going to estimate that to your customer based off of how long it takes for you to make that item and how they are actually shipping. My apologies, how you are shipping the item to them, what service you're using, and what speed of service, meaning whether or not it's first class or priority or express mail. Offer gift wrapping services. Many people are still shipping items directly to the recipient. Why not go in and create a listing where you can offer gift wrapping? Make it simple and easy. Give them a couple of choices, or maybe it's just your branded packaging that you're going to utilize, but give them an option to actually have their item gift wrapped they will definitely appreciate that. And make sure you have pictures so they know what it's going to look like, especially if they're sending it directly to a recipient. Establish a strong reputation. If you have a small number of orders per month, let's say under 100 or definitely under 50, if you want to do a handwritten note, that is amazing. I love it. However, your hands will eventually get tired. So I like to create my marketing materia through like Vista, or Vista Print, or any company that you want to use, just create a small batch of inserts that you can put into your orders that almost look and feel like handwritten notes, but they are branded with your information, your website, how to contact you, and what to do in the case that they need to return an item. Make sure your about page is filled out. We tend to overlook this as Etsy sellers because it is some work that you have to put into. We want to just create the items, take some pictures and list them, and magic is supposed to happen. However, you have to take the time to fill in the fine details. 
So if someone is really trying to make a decision between your shop and another shop that offers similar items, they are going to take a deep dive and they're going to look to see what is the shop about? Who am I shopping from? Are they on social media? Do you have social proof? Meaning I'm on Instagram or I'm on TikTok or I'm somewhere where they can connect with me outside of Etsy. And where also they can say, okay, this is a reputable company. I'm okay with spending my money with them. That's going into your social media presence, which I just mentioned. A lot of people are determining whether or not a small business is credible based off of their social presence. I don't want you going out and being on all the platforms unless you have someone that can help you do that. But if it's just you, one or two platforms, that's enough. And then make sure you're active on those platforms. Not enough to just have a page, but you have to be active. You want to prepare for the unexpected. We know we have now been through a major, major, major challenge in the past two years. And we know that during that time also, shipping was a nightmare. Let's just be honest. So when I established my cutoff dates, I established them a few days earlier than I normally would in past years just to account for anything that may happen with shipping. Consider vacation mode. Now, yes, when you go on vacation modes, your items are removed from the public. And yes, you may see a small decline when you come back in viewership. It will come back. It is okay. But I highly encourage vacation time, downtime, relaxation, breaks. Because you can't come back and do all these things all over again as a solopreneur, as a small business owner, if you're not taking the time to take a quick break for yourself. Let's talk about holiday trends. We're going to talk about holiday timing and opportunities, trends and best setters, opportunities by occasion, and category trends. But before we go into that, I want to check really quickly over into the chat, make sure everyone is still with me. Um, I don't see a lot of the functionalities that you mentioned in your presentation, like explore and setting up the autoresponder. Okay. If you have questions, remember, throw those in Q&A because I'm going to come back through and answer those. I won't be looking at the chat. Uh, I love doing videos in my store. That's amazing. My app only lets me do this once, and now it doesn't show the Explore option on the app. Yes, I agree. There have been some functionality issues that I've experienced as well. I'm going to pass that on to Etsy, and I'm going to suggest that they actually do a class on how to do Explore because... I have experienced that myself. So great questions and great feedback. I'm going to include that in my feedback to Etsy. I'm actually making a note for myself right now that there are issues that people are seeing with, uh, with the Explore app, okay? What else we got? Um, dun -dun -dun. Okay. All right, so again, how do you get buyer's consent to be, okay? Put that in Q&A. If you haven't already copied and pasted that in Q&A, please go ahead and put that in Q&A. Great, great, great. All right, let's hop right back in to the presentation and let's talk about holiday trends. So there are a lot of themes going around. How do you know what themes are going around? Here's the thing that I do as a creative, as someone that wants to be on train with the jewelry that I am producing. I will go in and just search on Google. What's the top trends in jewelry for 2022 or 2023 or for the holiday season? I will go on Pinterest and see what's hot. I will look in magazine. I will go on TikTok. I will do my research so that I know what I'm creating. Now, we're already in the thick of this holiday season. So I would suggest if you're going to introduce any new items, that you have those up and ready to go within the next week because you don't want to miss that opportunity to get them listed and working within the algorithm so they're actually being seen. Let's talk about some of the amazing things that people are doing with the holiday seasons, which we will tap into when we talk about trends. But first, holiday timing. Take a quick screenshot of this. Take a quick uh, video of this. These are some of the most important dates that you're going to want to know about over the next couple of months. Black Friday, Small Business Saturday. And if you want any ideas how you can set up your Black Friday or your uh, Small Business Saturday, I actually have a 
course. It's a crash course that's available on my website, seratospeaks.com, which we'll go over in just a second, that goes through two hours of how to prepare your shop, not just your Etsy shop, but any website. And it talks about how to set up promotional discounts and how to make sure you are setting up discounts where you create an urgency. I don't want to use the same promotion every single um, newsletter. I don't want to offer the same thing on Black Friday as I did on Small Business Saturday. Why? Because shoppers aren't going to shop twice. I want to get them on Black Friday. This is a one-time thing. Boom. Get that. I'm going to send another newsletter out. Here's Small Business Saturday. This is the only time you can get that deal. And your best deals should be during those two days. You can run sales any other day after that, but your best deals in order to create urgency should be during those first two days. Plan out your inventory. Know in advance that this is the best seller last year. I'm going to pre-buy a few more supplies. And if for some reason you don't sell all of that, then you have that huge sell the day right after Christmas where people are going to spend tons of money. My best seller last year or my best time last year was right after Christmas because people are looking for those after Christmas deals. Here are a few key things that you can expect to drive shopping through the season. People are seeking value. They're looking for those things that have that extra meaning, that are intentional, that are meaningful. They're looking for a lot of different bold and playful tones. As you've seen, the 80s are back. With my jewelry right now, we're doing a lot of chunky pieces, a lot of bold pieces, because that's what people are looking for, reminiscent of that, that time in life when things seem to be a little bit more carefree. They're also looking at some refined rustic styles. I see a lot of woodsy things just everywhere. So if you have some pieces that you can photograph with some holiday decor, some woodsy themes or some natural hues. Think about using those as props as well to really make your items pop when it comes up in the search. Tap into the wellness theme. With the wellness theme, that goes well beyond just the holiday season because some people buy right after the holiday and they want to send these gifts to someone. So they want something with value or something that increases self-care or help someone to take care of themselves. And sustainability is also a very, very big, I don't like to call it a trend because I do believe that it's going to be a lasting one, but it's definitely something that is on trend. Think about the holiday bestsellers. Take a quick snapshot of this. These are some things that typically sell well during the holiday season. You got gift boxes and sets. How can you bundle your items to create a gift box? Stocking stuffers. Advent calendars, charcuterie boards, if you have anything in that, that realm. Personalization is always going to be huge every single holiday. So if there's some type of level of personalization you can do with your items on Etsy, absolutely. If not, no big deal. Think about what it is that you can do to make it giftable. Here's some occasion opportunities. Back to school is already passed. Halloween, if you haven't hopped on that, it's already passed. So now it's just time to think about the holiday season, moving forward, anything that is before Thanksgiving and then during the holiday season. Let's talk about trends. Home and living is always a big one. It's always increasing year over year. So if you're in this realm, start searching the home decor gift guide on Etsy to see what other people are putting up. How are they photographing their items? How are they bringing the buyer into their shop with their amazing photos? Another trend is playing around with these joyful shades that we just talked about. We know the autumn colors are huge right now. That mustard color, that, that I don't want to call it a burnt orange. It's almost on the border of a rust color. Those bold, deeper shades of colors are really shining through right now. With style, you already see jewelry is on there. You're seeing those more vibrant colors. Emerald green has been a big one that I've seen a lot this year as well. It's been a big one. Uh, we got black satin dress. Oh, look, it just said it right there. Emerald green velvet dress. Velvet is back in. My husband just sent me a, uh, a jacket 
that he wants to get for our first holiday party. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. Throw it back in. And another quick tip for that, even if you are not using, uh, you're not selling clothes, if you're selling accessories of any type, when you take the photos, throw in some velvet, throw in some green. It helps to style your items and get people to connect with it and want the item. Glitz and glam, bold colors, rich textures. For some reason, pajama party is a thing right now. Okay, Take pictures in the pajamas. You hold in your item. Think of ways to incorporate these themes into your item and bring people into your shop. Gifting is always a big thing right around this time. I like to show items that could be that are giftable, but also I like to show how they look gift wrapped, which is an amazing thing for people when they're trying to see whether or not they want your item or just simply how does it come packaged? Maybe it's already packed without gift wrap. They want it. Goods for the home, fashionable finds, wellness kits. Again, we're, these are all reoccurring things that we keep saying. Gifts for keeping entertainment, gifts by recipient, popular price points. Take a quick screenshot of that because these are important things to know when it comes to gifting for this holiday season. Jewelry will always be and will remain one of the most popular categories. It's an overly saturated market, but you can still stand out. As you see some of these pieces on here, they're on here because they do what? They stand out. So think about how you can make your items stand out. It's in the photography. It's how you show it. It's in the creation. It's how you stage it. Looks like rings are a popular one. Chokers, the bigger, the thicker, the heavier. Bold bracelets. All these amazing things are, and then repurposing is always an amazing one as well. Crafting and supplies. If you're in the craft industry or that's your shop, think about what people are looking for. Crocheting, cross stitch. Denim is huge right now. And these are some of the popular trends as it comes into crafting and tools. People want crafts that make them feel like they can sit in home with a hot cup of coffee or hot cup of tea and really just indulge in that craft. Paper and party supplies is another one that's always been on the rise. So what are people looking for in that industry? They are looking for metallic touches. They want both the luxe and then some people want the more simplistic or natural. So depending on where you are, if this is your industry, Think about what people are searching for this holiday season and what trends are important. Weddings. Who doesn't love a good wedding? What are people looking for in the wedding industry right now? People are looking for texture. We've seen that a couple of times. Things they can do as keepsakes for gifts, for their attendees, for their uh, bridal party, um, for the wedding party. They're looking for florals, DIY. You can make little DIY kits of some of your items. That's amazing because they can use those in their bridal parties. Vintage is another great one. It's an industry that I believe will always um, be popular, but it depends on what is considered vintage during that time that you want to focus in on. So as you can see right now, plaids are back in, plaids are all over the place. You don't have plaid, go get you some plaid. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yes, plaids and florals are back in as well. And here's some themes that they are looking for. 70s, 90s, and Y2K fashions. Um, I see a lot of the 80s in there. I related to the 80s. If you see these little BFF bracelets, that totally reminds me of when my childhood was in the 80s. I'm dating myself, I know. All right, tips for a successful holiday season. Get those giftable items up early, 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 early. You still have time. You still have time. You want to be ready for Cyber Week. You want to be ready for um, the Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. Start making that plan right now if you don't know how to make that plan. As I said, I have a course that goes over all of that for you. Offer personalization options um, if you can. Cater to a wide range of gift recipients, again, if you can. If your specialty is moms of three-year-olds, stick with it if it's working for you. 
Jump on that cyber event that Etsy has that they're advertising. It helps to give your shop a little boost in the uh, search engine. Make sure you're using photographs to actually showcase your items in a seasonal setting. Appeal to those last minute shoppers, but ready to ship items. And keep up the holiday momentum by getting a head start on what comes next. What comes next? New Year's Eve. What's the big one after that? Valentine's Day. Start thinking about those things. And then look for Etsy to put out their Market Insights report for the 2023 season later in this season. Let's do a quick recap. And then I'm diving into some Q&A. Um, now's the time to get your shop ready. You want to optimize the shop for using the keywords and the categories and the attributes. You want to look at your inventory and see what you have and what you need to order right now because we know, for instance, I use these little black boxes to put my jewelry in. I've already ordered up twice as many as I ordered last year because they're going to be out of stock. And then I'm going to be here trying to figure out what am I going to put the jewelry in. Use your photos and video. We talked about that using all 10 photos. We've talked, and there's even a uh, article on the Etsy seller handbook or in the blog and article section that shows you how to get 10 photos out of the listings that you, I mean, the photos that you're using. It actually details it out for you. Market your shop. If you don't market it, who will? No one else is going to do it for you. So you've got to get out there and market your shop. Uh, customer service is key. We talked about that. We also talked about holiday trends. And what's next? Again, connect with me. I give away free tips on TikTok all the time. I've got a whole playlist on my TikTok full of specifically Etsy shop tips. If I don't post another video, you can go in and watch over 800 videos where I'm helping small business owners grow their business. Uh, follow me on um, Instagram. I've been kind of quiet there lately because I've been going through a transition but we're going to start ramping that up as well. But most importantly, if you hop over to my website, you will see the small business shop course that I know will help you get your shop ready if you need someone to guide you through what to do and how to do it. Let's talk questions, but I'm going to leave this up for anyone that wants to see that while I hop over into the questions. Let me go over to here. Okay, great, 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 great. Um, let's see what we got in Q&A, my friends. I'm going to go all the way up because it looks like we've got a lot of Q&A. And I'm just going to put a quick um, up symbol on it or a thumbs up <laughs> once I answer it. All right. Hello. When is the light, latest time to put the Christmas products for the season? When is the latest time to put the Christmas products for the season? Arena, I'm thinking you are asking me, and if, if this is correct, I hope it is. I'm going to answer this live. So I'm thinking you are asking me, when should you put your Christmas items up for your shop? The answer is now. The latest? Um, there's no real latest. Uh, you may miss out on uh, some opportunities the longer you wait. However, if you get them up in the next couple of weeks, you should still be good. Definitely before people start turning their mind from Thanksgiving straight into Christmas. You do not want to miss that opportunity at the end of November. As you saw in my sales, that 30 month period where I made the most that one year was between November 16th and December 16th, which tells you that's when people start shopping the most. They're already shopping in all honesty, but that's an opportunity for you. All right. Uh, next one, Kathy, I am new to Etsy. I struggle with correct titles, words for my listings. I'm always getting Etsy recommendations after adding my title words. Um, Kathy, I'm not sure if that was a question or not, but if you are struggling with titles and tags, again, hop over to my TikTok and look up the playlist Etsy seller listings or Etsy, I'm sorry, Etsy, um, Etsy shop tips and just scroll through those. I talk about how to find titles and tags and what to look for. We talked about it a little bit today, but I actually do quick videos on it for you. So um, another quick tip is to go in and look at other people that sell similar items to you. Meaning if you sell jewelry, I would go Google. I mean, I would go search for gold jewelry on Etsy and whatever's coming up at the top, Whatever's coming up at the top, not the ads, but the items that are the best sellers, 
that are appearing higher in the search, those are well-optimized titles. Go look and see what they're doing. Next one, would you recommend going back and adjusting categories and attributes seasonally? So you could call something a Christmas gift for that season and then change. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Jesse. It's, I'm sorry. Yes, 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 yes. I have a spreadsheet that I utilize with my team and we actually go in every season. By the end of December, literally two days after Christmas, we're updating tags and titles for Valentine's Day. We already have some stuff that we will put Valentine's Day on probably early December so that it has time to build up in the algorithm. So yes, definitely want to go in there and update those seasonally. Otherwise, what's the point? I've got a quick video on TikTok that shows you how to do quick edits for updating your titles and tags. Um, Kathy, that one says holiday decor. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, dismiss that one. I'm not sure that question. Okay. Um, Christy, is there a way to see other shop tags to compare them? I have a video on that as well. I mean, literally, let, let, I, I'm going to go to my TikTok right now just to, to see. Uh, express, it, okay, on the TikTok, let me see if it shows my, because, yes. So, so the first playlist you'll see says small business sounds. Keep scrolling. You'll see something that says, da, 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 all the way at the end, Etsy shop tips. Under Etsy shop tips, there are 45 videos specifically for Etsy. And one of those does show you how you can find the tags that a shop owner is using. It's not really that apparent. You can use your phone. And basically, once you scroll down to the bottom, you will see, it will say, look for other items or similar items. So you can't really just see full on what they're using, but it's based off of what else Etsy is suggesting, if that makes sense. But what I would suggest doing is really diving into their tags and descriptions. Because, they, I mean, I'm sorry, their titles and descriptions. Because the words they use in their titles are more often going to also be the words they use in their tags. Is there a better way to use shorter keywords or is it better to maximize the character count with more? If it's shorter to the point, you don't have to use all 140 characters. You will see that when you um, start looking for items within your niche or your industry, you will see that some people don't use all 140 characters and they're still ranking pretty high. It's because they were very intentional with selecting the keywords they use. This is a gift for mom, um, green bicycle rack. And that's what they're ranking for because that's something someone's looking for. But if you want to make sure that you are maximizing, I would use all of the characters. I would separate them by a comma and not by any other character. You want to break it up by a comma because that way you get these beautiful long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are two to three keywords put together to form a phrase, gift for mom, birthday gifts for mom, and then comma, Christmas stocking stuffer, comma, mom gift, last minute mom gift, comma. You see where I'm going? Yes, you can use more keywords. Make sure you break them up. Uh, Sue. When doing video content for listings, let me hop over into general and make sure there's no one over here. My products are seeing this. Okay. Uh, how would I spend? Okay. My loves, if you're putting uh, q and A in chat, I'm going to need you to switch over to Q&A and put the question in Q&A so I can get to you. All right. Let me go back up. Sue, when doing video content for listings on things like prints, what can you video for a print? I'm going to assume you're talking about like artwork, okay? When you go to TikTok and, and, and I do um, research, the biggest part of any marketing is research. And that's the most time consuming, but it's what's going to give you the ideas. So when I work through a marketing plan for my customers, uh, my clients, because uh, I do marketing plans where I map out their whole month of what content to create. Part of that is by going to TikTok, and typing in digital print, digital artwork, whatever keywords you use, see what comes up and see what other people are doing with their prints. That's your answer right there. Every industry is going to be different. 
but you have to do the research in order to find out what other people are doing in that industry. All right. And I believe it's Kylie. I don't want to say that wrong. Baker, can you say more about what the Explore app is, please? I've not heard of it before. I'm actually going to send Etsy uh, a message about the Explore app. I'm not as familiar with it, again, because I don't sell on Etsy as much as I used to. Um, I sell on my main site. But what I'm going to do when I find out the information, Kylie, is I'm, and I hope I'm saying your name right, I'm going to create a TikTok on it probably next week. Make sure you go in and check uh, daily to see if I put the video up. But I'm going to create a video about the Explore app so that I can answer that question for you. Because, again, I'm not um, that familiar with it because I don't use it. But I do know people have had a few issues with it. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Elizabeth, how do you create a shop announcement? Um, again, go to Google and type in how to create shop announcement for Etsy or go to look under the Etsy shop tips and one of those 45 videos will walk you through it. I can't walk you through it on the screen simply because um, we don't have that functionality, but here's the long and short of it or the short answer to a long, short answer to a longer answer. When you go into your shop and you click edit shop, you will see where you can edit everything within your shop. And the very top one should have a pencil icon under shop announcement. You click that and you start typing in that information. So again, it's under edit shop. Click edit shop. Scroll to where you see your shop announcement. Click the pencil and that's where you can do it. All right. Yes, I would love to know more about Explore. I looked into sell on Etsy and Etsy app and could not find any there in the separate app. Okay. Promise I will get that from Etsy. And I have something for you guys next week. Emily, I sell crystal jewelry. A lot of my items are similar, just a different crystal. A lot of my SEO is the same, just switching the crystal names out. Does this hurt my search ranking? It's hard to come up with different words when the items are so alike. I don't believe it hurts your ranking as long as you have some kind of um, differentiator in there. And with crystal names, sometimes anyone that is really into crystals, they know the crystals by name. That unto itself means if I am looking for an amethyst or I am looking specifically for a turquoise or I'm looking specifically for a certain um, quartz, quartz, I'm sorry, I will look for that name. And if your listing is well itemized, then it can come up in that search. I don't believe it hurts it at all. But what I would do if I am getting a lot of the similar titles, I would change the order. So meaning I may put what I put at the end of one of them. I may put that phrase at the beginning of another listing just to switch it up. Hope that helps. Okay. Uh, Sue, would it be appropriate to have different prices in different countries in order to take on the shipping cost? Very good question. And here's what I say to that. You do not offer free shipping internationally ever, 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 ever. I would not suggest that at all. Therefore, you do not have to have different pricing because if I'm ordering something inter internationally, most customers that shop internationally understand they have to pay for shipping. They're not looking for free shipping. They're looking for an item that they really want that's special to them. So they're willing to pay the shipping. Domestic customers, in, wherever you are domestically, they're looking for free shipping. So I would not offer free shipping on international um, purchases. Hope that helps, Sue. Mandy, what is the name of your shop? I would love to look at your policies. Absolutely. I'm getting ready to put this in general right now. Expressions, bracelets, and it is um, one word as all of our shops are. Expressions, bracelets. I'm going to send that right now. And then let me see if I can pin this to the top. Dun, 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 dun. Pin the message to the top. That's me, expressions, bracelets. If you want to find me on TikTok. Uh, for my business consulting, let me put that as well. Serata Speaks is, you, if you Google Serata Speaks, you should be able to find uh, find me. But I'm also going to put the information here in case you are um, wondering about how you can, let me see, dun, 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 dun. I'm going to pin that one as well, okay? Um, I tell you what, it, it won't let me do that. Let me Let me write one big message so you guys can... Expressions, bracelets is the Etsy shop. And then you're very welcome. And then Serata 
speaks is the other one. If you guys want to hop off because you are, you've gotten all the information you need, uh, I'm going to continue to answer questions for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to stick around, but don't uh, hesitate to leave if you've already gotten everything that you need. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm going to pin this one for you. And then that's the information if anyone needs to know how to find me or find my shop. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and hop off if you need to hop off. I'm going to keep going through these Q&A, though, to make sure um, I get everyone that has a question because uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Uh, so, Mandy, I put that in the um, bum, ba, da, da, the general chat for you, and I pinned the answer to my shop name. Uh, Annie, what's your opinion on changing the listing photos often? I love this especially the main listing picture, even though I feel like I'm improving the photos, I believe this affects the algorithm. I have seen that my sales drop when I change the listing photos. It does not impact the What it impacts is whether or not that photo is drawing people in. Let me help you out with that. So if there was a photo that was working well for me, I'm not going to change the main photo because it is what's making people come to the shop. Think of it this way. If I'm a uh, buyer and I type in um, coffee cups or coffee mugs, right? When the search comes up on that first page, I think it's like 24 or 30 different pictures, right? As a buyer, you're going to scroll through and you're going to click on whatever grabs your attention, whatever pops, whatever stands out. That's what they mean by scroll stopping photos. So if I clicked your listing the first time I saw it, because that picture drew me in, and so many more people did the same thing because it was an amazing picture, I'm not changing that first picture because that's what gets people to my shop once I have optimized the listing with the right keywords. That picture is going to get them to your shop. What I would do, however, if I would list that item again as a second listing, same item, make sure your inventory... Uh, you, you've split up your inventory so you're not selling something that you don't have. And then try different keywords and different photos and see how it does in 30 days is what I would suggest if you want to switch up pictures. The only time I suggest switching, switching pictures is if you have a much better picture and you know it's better or if it's seasonal and you want to capitalize on that. Hope that helped you out, Annie. Sandra. Will this be available for replay? My husband needed me for something and I missed some of your video. Yes, I'm going to. I did record it. I'm going to have to check with Etsy and see how I can get the actual video. And then I'm going to then try to upload it to my YouTube channel. Okay. So I am going to look into that. Uh, and I'm making myself a note, note now replay for students. So make sure you are following me on one of the platforms so that you know when I upload it. Okay. Thanks so much, Sandra. Uh, how do you do videos with POD? Oh, purchase on demand shirts. Ooh, girl, then you know what? You're going to have to order some of your inventory. That's what I would do. Uh, because you get it at a, at, a, at a wholesale cost anyway, order some of your items. And you, that's how you do the video. Now, not all of them, just a few of them. But that's what I would suggest. Or... Have your customers, if you can work with one of your customers to help create video for you. Maybe give them an incentive, a free shirt or something if they can submit. Well, maybe not a free shirt. That's a lot. But maybe say, hey, if you can send me five videos, we'll give you a free shirt. That could be a, a good, good cost. Two or three videos, maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, I think it's uh, Jonah. I hope I'm saying that right. I apologize. Work. In my shop, I wish I could tag my banner pictures to go to my shop listing. I notice my featured items automatically do that. Uh, yes, you can. If you have something called Etsy Plus, let me type that into the chat. Uh, Etsy Plus, I think it's about five or $10, uh, allows you to, let me type in that in, um, to, to, to have a click through option on your banner. It also allows you to have a uh, carousel. So if you see my shop, it is under Etsy Plus. I do have, now I haven't updated it with seasonal. I probably won't. I don't do those things anymore on that shop. I think I probably have 18 items in there. Again, my shop is just really a placeholder right now on Etsy. However, 
Um, if you use Etsy Plus, you not only get um, a couple of free listings per month, it kind of pays for itself. You also get a couple of bucks off of ads and you're able to do more with your shop features. So that's something you may want to look into. Sue, when, do, when doing a title on Etsy, what is the best format? As I have seen multiple pieces of advice on this, some say use commas and others say, others say make sure the full title reads so that it makes a sentence. Um, Etsy themselves, as well as Google, has told us not to use just one big bleeding word. It's like your mind can't even compute and read. It's like reading something and not stopping for a breath, which is the same thing that happens with search engine bots. You have to break that up. And the best character to use is a comma. If you go in and Google that, it will tell you the same thing. Now, that's the format that I would use. I would just break it up to what is readable. Gifts for mom, comma. Gold trendy necklace, comma. Layering necklace for girls, comma. It makes it readable, but it also helps with the search engine. Other than that, um, the vertical line is aesthetically pleasing, but it does not help you with your um, SEO. And that you can find out just by Googling that to see that information. Mandy, would you be willing to do a, a shop review for me? I haven't gotten it all together, but haven't had any sales yet. Mandy, I used to do Etsy shop consults and reviews. Um, I no longer do that. Um, the clients that I take on, we actually go through a three month process together and we're doing a business consult for them, which actually helps you as an overhaul, overall comprehensive and not just the one off. But what it does for them is it walks through um, their finances, how to set up their operations, um, how to source products and things like that. So it's it's a more higher end cost. But yes, I used to, but I don't anymore. So sorry about that, Mandy, which is why I do a lot of quick one-offs on TikTok. Uh, I may set up a TikTok live and do quick Etsy shop reviews. Now that you say that, I may actually do that. Um, so catch me live one day and I may be doing a few of those uh, for people that are on there. And it's just a quick like 60 second, not even long, maybe 30 seconds. Um, but that's how I kind of still give back to the community. Uh, Christy. I have most of my items set to ship in one day because I can do that and I thought it would be good marketing. Should I switch to one to three days and just keep shipping out in one day? You can do a little bit of both, meaning on some of your listings, put one to three and on some, just keep it at the one day. The thing of it is, if you really are shipping out in one day, I wouldn't change that only because a lot of people are drawn to the one day and you may see a drop or an impact in sales if you switch it to one to three. Because for some people, that's a big difference. So I would leave it where it is for right now and just keep shipping out. If any, if any point you get too busy, then switch over to the one to three so then you can ship it out in two days. Uh, Marlon, how do you add that big portrait photo on your about page? Dun, 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 dun. Aha, so you have to go to edit shop, scroll all the way down to where your about, about shop is. And there you will be able to click on the pencil icon is where you add in the text and the photos. So go to your about page. I wonder, let me see something. I wanna see, I'm gonna open up another screen and see Marlon, if you're still on here, how I can show you where that is. And then I'm gonna see if I can share my screen for you guys to show you how to edit your shop. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, okay. Let me see. I'm gonna stop sharing this one. I'm going to share my entire screen. And dun dun dun. dun. Okay. We're gonna uh, let me do a window. We're gonna do. No, let's go ahead and do the entire screen. Let's do the entire screen. And I'm going to now hop over. If you will, my friends, let me know if you can now see my shop dashboard. Just go in there and press yes, 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 yes. Now, as you guys can see, we don't really do anything over here on Etsy at all. All of my cells, the 13,000 cells that you see on there, 
came from my first few years on Etsy. But let me know if you can see my screen. All right, let me go over to chat and make sure you guys can see that. Okay, perfect. Let me go back to the dashboard. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's go to, and you see how I have Etsy Plus right there? That's Etsy Plus that actually allows me to have the type of banner that I have. All right, so I'm going to go to, going to go back out to my shop. It always makes it moves things around. You see, okay, so under my shop manager, I'm going to go to my shop, click the little pencil icon, going to go over here, and you will see, first and foremost, that's my banner, okay? If I want to edit that banner, that is what we call the Etsy Plus banner, which means this right here links to um, an actual, right there, that shows you where I can link it to. I can remove the link, I can link it to a listing, link it to a section, and I can have that link in the image and it says shop sentimental gifts for her. Again, if you go over there, you're going to see that it doesn't look where it should because we no longer sell these, but this was during the last holiday where we updated this. Uh, but you can see that you can click through each one of those. There's the link, and then if I want to do the picture... And I would click the delete button and add a picture. I can change the layout. Those are my options that I can change. We can do collage, big banner, mini banner, or none at all. Okay. This is all from having Etsy Plus. If I want to go in and change, let me exit out of here. So when I'm done with that, I'm going to click that. Now I want to cancel. Now I want to be able to, and this is still under editing my shop. I want to go in and be able to edit my... Okay, what does it say about cancel? There we go. This is where I can edit the shop title. That's your shop title. That's your location. Scrolling down a little bit more. Someone had asked about your shop announcement. This is where you can rearrange photos. I think I see someone that asked about that. So you can rearrange photos right here, switch them around, move them around, move them to another page. This is your shop announcement. If you want to edit that, and you guys can go look at mine to see what I put in mine. That's where you edit it. You want to add in your about page right here. It says about expressions braces. This is where you do it. This is where you add that big video. This is where you add your pictures. This is where you edit the content next to it or the copy. Okay. Uh, this is where you edit the about part where they actually read more about your company. Um, this is where you add in your social icons, Facebook, website, um, Pinterest. You can even add your own website. That, uh, your external website. Um, this is where you can add your shop members. Again, we haven't updated that in years. Uh, but I have, when I was fully functioning on Etsy, I filled out absolutely everything. These are my shop policies. Frequently asked questions, all filled out. There's not a spot on my website that is not filled out. Um, and that's how I was able to um, grow on Etsy by really getting in there and optimizing my shop. Okay. All right. Let me go back and let me stop sharing that. And I want to share the, um, back to where you guys can see where to connect with me. All right. Let's go in for more questions, more questions. I want to get these questions answered for you. I got about 15 more minutes to answer questions and I've got several. So let me go through them. Um, Kathy, how do you add express shipping using Etsy labels? You're going to have to go into your shipping profiles for that. Shipping profiles, okay? And then you're going to have to use your drop-down menu and select express shipping. Jessica, where do you find Explorers? I can't seem to find it. It is an app. Uh, I am going to look for more information on that from Etsy itself. And I will get you guys a TikTok video. If you're not on TikTok, hop on TikTok so you can get the answer to this question by next week. Is the Explore app available on Android yet? Very good question. Um, if you don't see it in your options, I could have, let me see. I'm just going to go to mine right now since we have, I've seen this question quite a few times. And I know I have it on my iPad. I'm an Android um, girl with my phone because they have the best cameras. So let's see. It does not come up, which means no. So I'm going to talk to Etsy about that one. Just Etsy seller and Etsy buy and sell on Etsy. Okay. All right. Uh, very good questions though, guys. I appreciate this. Uh, where to find the autoresponder. Dun, 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 dun. 
the autoresponder. Let me see if I can show you that really quickly. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to share my entire screen once again. Share. Go over here. The autoresponder, my friends. You go to your shop manager. You go over to your messages. And at the very top, right here, have it on. That's your auto reply. Click to on. I have a message that automatically goes out as soon as someone sends me a message. I set it for five days and I keep setting it every five days. I also have uh, my saved replies right here. Remember we were talking about those frequently asked questions if someone needs a quick answer, okay? All right. Hopefully it didn't change what I had there. No, it did not. And that's that, okay? Um, let's go back to, okay, another couple of questions. Um, is free shipping always the best option? I don't see a lot of stores in my niche doing free shipping and I wonder why. Selling, which I don't know, Jackie, um, if it's something that's heavier or something that um, costs more to ship, don't do free shipping. Um, if it works for you and you're able to build that cost into the price so that you don't lose money, offer free shipping. It's, a, it's called psychological pricing. It's sort of like Amazon. With Amazon, you're not technically getting free shipping. If you're a Prime member, if an item is $14.95 free shipping, if you're not a Prime member, the item is $10.95, $4.95 shipping. They wrap it up in the cost. But mentally, psychologically, our mind says it's free, so we go for it. Is it wise to use a video that is a little more generic to your store as opposed to creating a video for every listing, which can be time consuming? This way you can post the same video for a lot of listings. Absolutely. So if you have several different items that you can show in one video, that's awesome. But don't take your whole shop and use one video over and over and over. Use it by category. So if I'm going to show several different personalized necklaces, cool. Or several different chunky rings, cool or several, several different style bra bangle bracelets, but I wouldn't take my whole shop because then it just confuses the customer and it's no point. But I would go by categories. Very good question, Francis. Cecilia, uh, how do you get a buyer's consent to be able to send them emails? Very, very good. So with that, I have an opt-in. They were able to scan into when they get their order. When they get their order, I have a marketing thing set up. And this is when I used to be on Etsy a lot. Um, I would tell them, hey, go sign up here for an extra 15% up. Or go sign up here for this. You have to entice them to sign up for it, which once they go to sign up, that is their consent. And it's by marketing material that you put in your orders, not by going through the Etsy chat. Uh, Lindsay, I haven't had any questions from customers about products. They are just buying them. This is great for me but not great for my star selling rating. Is there something I can do to get more customers to message me to help my star rating? Um, I'm not sure why your star seller is, your star seller rate, rating is only impact if you don't answer the question within 24 hours. That's what impacts it, not more people responding to you. Unfortunately with that, if you miss a message, it carries over for like three months and you have to wait until that drops off. Uh, Aerocraft, we launched our Etsy shop almost a month and a half ago. We have been working daily on keywords and listings. Uh, Instagram page will be launched soon. We already a first sell. Any advice on what we should focus on, even though almost all of the information above is applied? That's a difficult one because that's more of something I would have to go through your business itself to, to look at it and to do a consult for it. Um, there's no one size fits all. I can't tell you to go in and make TikTok videos. It's going to work for you. It depends on what your business is, where your sales are coming from. So I would have to analyze your business in order to actually answer that. I do apologize for not being able to give you a quick answer on that. Other than that, you got to stick with marketing and creating video content. Uh, Christina, are you going to share your presentation? That would be a great help. Uh, we're going to try to do that as soon as I get permission from Etsy. It'll be on my YouTube channel. Are you going to be able to set the slide or send the slides? I don't believe so because I don't have access to any of your emails. Um, if you want to find me and uh, and I can send them to you via email, that's perfectly fine. But otherwise, um, you'll have to wait for the YouTube video, which I would suggest doing, to um, watch it again. 
Uh, Christina, I have personal. I have a personal Instagram and Pinterest account. Should I set these accounts for business that are only business oriented? I would separate my personal from my business as with anything. Um, I have both personal and business on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook, you name it. The reason being is because my customers are not my family and friends. They might be by default because they like something they see, but I'm not marketing to them. That's my personal activity. So I would suggest, yes, splitting those up. Uh, Georgia, or I think I said that right. Sorry, I'm late. Are you going to share the recording? I'm going to try to share it on YouTube. How many products do I need to have in my shop? That is totally dependent upon what you're selling, uh, how much you're able to stock in your shop. There's no magical number. Uh, why only break them up by a comma? Does that make a difference? I believe I answered that one already earlier about what Google actually prefers. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can find that over here. How to, what is it? I'm going to use why, what, see, why use commas? I'm actually doing a quick search. Commas um, to separate, uh, I'm going to say uh, titles. Uh, it, I couldn't find the exact listing on it, but um, there has been uh, an article put up by Etsy that talks about that. Are mixed tags good like green, red, blue, instead of tagging those colors individually and using more tags. I would say utilize those tags. You've got, I think, 20 characters. If Is it a green bowl? Is it a blue spoon? Is it a red towel? Um, use more adjectives in, in there as well. Um, and you can also use those in your attributes. And so if you're using them in the attributes, you don't have to double up and use them in your tags. Anne-Marie, thank you for going over my last question. I noticed you repeated some words such as gift. My understanding is that you are only supposed to use a word once in a tag section. Has that changed? No, it has not. I just use those as examples, not as a hard and fast rule for you to write that out as your title. I apologize for that, but it was just examples of keywords to use. But thank you for clarifying, um, Anne-Marie. Shirley, how much should I spend on advertisement for the holidays? Uh, as a rule of thumb, I like to tell my clients that I work one-on-one -on -one with, when you start into advertising, start with a small budget, but that budget is based upon you. Do you have $500 to spend on, on advertising? Cool. Break that up over 30 days. Do you have $1,000? Break it up over 30 days. Whatever you do, make sure at the end of that 30 days that your return on investment makes sense. So if I spend $985 on ads and only made $800, I'm upside down. That means I need to go in and tweak what I'm advertising or learn how to best utilize ads on Etsy, which I think someone is actually doing a class on, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So as a rule of thumb with Etsy, start out with about $3 a day, I would say, 3 to 5 if you have that within your budget. I will be honest with you, most platforms like Facebook or Pinterest, most companies that advertise on there effectively are starting anywhere at the very least $50 a day all the way up to $100 a day which is why I teach my clients organic methods to get traffic to your website and to your uh, brand because it's, it takes more time, it takes more effort from you, but it costs you less in the end. So hopefully that answers three to five a day should be good, Shirley. Christina, what platform do you recommend to create your own site? Depends upon what you are selling. You have Shopify, which is really easy for most people, and most Etsy sellers transition from Etsy to Shopify very seamlessly because your catalog can be imported, which is what I would suggest. Um, I use BigCommerce, but it can be difficult to build your website, so I would suggest Shopify. Hello, I have a seamless pattern store. Okay, Leah, I'm not sure if that was a question, but that's awesome that you have that. I'm going to go ahead and click that one off. Uh, how do I learn how to list multiple items, etc.? I would like to, oh, example, I would like to sell a set of six necklaces but you pick out the six colors you want. Where do I learn to do this? Um, that's going to be in you adding listing variations. Listing variations. So when you go into your listings, you're going to have to play around with where you have options to add those listings. Um, can't show you that one live because we're running right up against time. But actually look up how to do listing variations on Etsy and it will walk you through it. Could you put the pricing slide back on the screen? Miss getting a screenshot. Uh, Roger and Mindy, I apologize. The pricing slide 
I'm not sure which one that is. Uh, it says pricing, but what I will do is when we load this back up on YouTube, um, I will make an announcement on TikTok and on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, that may be the easiest way. Check back sometime late next week and I should have it up there. Hopefully I'll have it up as soon as uh, Monday or Tuesday, but that way you'll be able to go through and watch the video and get that slide. Cause I apologize, I'm not sure which slide that is. Leah, I have to post earlier the seasons. I have to post earlier the seasons because my buyers have to make their own products with, oh, and be ready for the season. Okay, that's great. I would post, I mean, honestly speaking, we were talking about Christmas in July uh, for my clients. We start them working on it in July. The earlier, the better. Uh, how many times before do you recommend to post or add a listing for a new season? Uh, two to three months at the very least, two to three months. Hope that helped, Leah. I think I answered that one for you. Do you recommend rearranging your items in your shop? Uh, I like to do it because it's aesthetically pleasing for me and it helps my shoppers when they're looking. I put my best photographed items on my first page because sometimes I may list the item and the photo is not all that great or not something. You know, I'm listing it because we want to sell it. We want to see how it's doing. I may move it to page two and keep my best sellers on page one because think about how you shop on Amazon. When you click under the search results, you probably only look at that first one or two pages. You're not going in page three and four. Best sellers on the first page. So to answer that, yes. Pedro, I'll have some, I'll have seen people list the same item two times with different titles so it comes up more often. Is that a good idea? Or better to list one time with more marketing spins? That's when you're talking about advertising. If you're trying to do organic reach, you can list it a couple of times because you're just paying for the listing itself and you're trying to do an A-B testing is what they call it, where you're looking to see which one performs better over the next 30 days. If you just want to do marketing dollars, that's totally up to you and how you want to do your ad campaign. However, I'm a big organic um, marketing, organic traffic. Um, that's how I have sustained my business for the most part. And yes, we have spent money on marketing dollars. But for the most part, it's organic traffic. Kathy, are you familiar with Etsy, me, that takes customers directly to the item you're listing? If so, how do you add this? I am not. I'm not sure what Etsy, uh, me, is um, or which platform you are referring to. So I apologize for Kath Kathy. If you have clarification on that, you can hop into a question. I'm going to try to get through this a few more questions, and then I may have to wrap this one up. Uh, Annika, I tried for some time to do print on demand, but it didn't really work. So I decided to change for digital products. Uh, what do you think is working better, physical or digital products? Also, how can I bring more traffic to my digital products? Again, this, this question is more of someone having to do a consult for you um, because it depends on what type of digital product you're making. What's the theme? Where is that audience? Your audience may solely be on Instagram or they may be on TikTok or they may like email marketing. Um, Digital or physical products. Digital seems to be more cost effective and you can create more um, SVGs and, and, and journals for them to download. Um, there are some people that are doing it very well, but it really just depends on what your product is and how you are marketing it to your target audience. Mandy, my POD supplier just went up on shipping to $6.95 on a coffee mug. My cost for the mug is $6.95. How am I supposed to cover that and not price myself out of the competition for sales? With a coffee mug, if it's at $6.95, unless you're selling a whole bunch of them at that price, you're, gonna, you're not going to make your money back regardless. That's why a lot of coffee mugs are $15 or $19 because they're trying to cover shipping or you may have to think about changing up your product, unfortunately, if you feel like that you cannot um, source this product, print on demand at a reasonable cost and make your margins. You may want to think about another item that's easier to ship. Coffee mugs are expensive to ship. That's just a suggestion. Um, if you were a client, I would tell my client um, to think about another product and, and do some market research to understand what's in demand. Christine, I have to go, but thank you so much. Absolutely. You're very welcome. 
Is there a good way to add a short time lapse video of the creation drawing process for the Etsy product listing for my? Oh, yes, it is. It is. Yes. I love a good time lapse. Yes. Uh, Sarah. Okay. Looks like, oh my God, am I in general or Q and A? Let me go back. I hope I'm in Q and A. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Have to run. Just started following. Love it. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, how did you add the heart? You may be asking, ah, you're talking about in my, uh, just my description. Here's the quick thing that I'm giving you guys permission to do. All right. Because it's my shop. You can go in and copy my description and listing, meaning you just take your cursor and go over it and copy it and drop it into your, um, to your listings and then add your information. That way you have the hearts on there. But it's just by using um, a different font that I copied and pasted from a website. Hope that helps. But copy my heart. Just go in there and copy it and drop it in yours or the arrow or whatever I use, the star. So just copy that emoji or that icon and drop it in yours. I gave you total permission. Is it true that if keywords are included in the same, in the name of a store Etsy on Etsy, that store and products can be easier to search and more SEO friendly. Um, the title of your shop should be exactly what you do. If you offer personalized items, that should be your shop title um, because that's what Google is reading to understand what your site is about. It's like your page header. Um, so yeah, uh, in the name of a store. It's more the shop title that optimizes the shop, not necessarily the name. The name is good too, don't get me wrong. But if you want to keep your name, I would focus on the words I use in my shop title. Nikki, sorry if you've already covered this. Would you say that building brand consistency through similar filters on shop images, making it cohesive, is just as important and less as important than having a social media presence. I would say to try not to use filters on your items because you're going to distort the color and what the uh, customer thinks they are getting. So I don't use filters on um, my items. Um, I do try to take them in natural light. I do have professional photographers to take pictures as well, uh, but I try to avoid filters. But if you want to use filters, yes, I would say definitely uh, use the same ones to make it cohesive. Absolutely. I am mainly wondering, is it more important to focus on my Etsy shop or to start out and make it pretty? Or do I really try to get a social media following? Um, your Etsy shop is only as good as the people that want to buy it, which means you have to simultaneously do both and you have to manage your time in order to do that. Meaning if I have an Etsy shop and it's gorgeous, but nobody's checking it out because I'm not promoting it, then that's pointless. Or if I have a huge following, but they don't know that I have an Etsy shop or they go to my Etsy shop and it's like, yeah, I don't want to buy from her. I just want to follow her on social. So you have to consistently do both, Nikki. Uh, Marlon, from Etsy site with Explore, you can create, that will be featured on, okay, I think he was just asked. Thank you, Marlon. Uh, thank you, Christina. Uh, what best way to leverage or convert a favorite notice into a sell? Oh, that's a tough one on Etsy because people go in and favorite stuff all the time, all day, every day. I even have uh, automated emails that are supposed to be sent from Etsy to the person. Um, it's, it's like 10% off or 15% off. And I have seen no conversion in that, to be quite honest with you. I even uh, asked about why my favorite emails weren't being sent out. I mean, someone's favorites my item, they're immediately supposed to get an email within a day that says, hey, here's a coupon for you. So that's a that's a difficult one because that's really based off of how Etsy sets it up. And you can't contact that person and say, hey, I mean, you can if you want to. Hey, here's the item. If you want to spend the time to personally send them a message, you can. Uh, hello, do you have any advice for a handmade press on nails business? I want to be able to ship faster so I can compete with my other sellers, but it's myself. Um, shipping faster means you have, to, are you making these to order? You know, there's some information that I would need from you. Are you making these to order? If you're making them to order, then you really can't ship any faster because are they cut to the person's, uh, nail size? Um, do you want, maybe you only sell a certain style 
and pre-make several of them in different sizes. It's like if I had beaded bracelets, maybe to ship faster, I have a few items that are ready to ship in certain sizes so that I can ship faster. Hope that helps. Uh, yes, we're going to repost. Can you have the same list in the Etsy and Shopify at the same time with one being delisted if it sells on the other app? That I'm not sure about because, again, I don't have... I, I don't work with Shopify that much. Um, so I would definitely Google that to, to find the answer, Christy. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, okay. In addition to digital products, also have a print-on-demand store. And let me go down to a few more. Let me see. Um, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Christina. Awesome. Can you please tell where I find the link to your Etsy shop? It is in the chat. It's Expressions Bracelets. If you go to Etsy or if you go to Serata Speaks, or if you find me on TikTok, any of those will lead you directly to my shop. And I typed in and pinned at the top, Expressions Bracelets. You're so welcome, Leo. You're so welcome, Ayanka. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I think I cleared off all of these. Um, okay, my friends, I appreciate you guys sticking around with me and hanging out for these Q&As. Again, follow me on Insta, which will be the easiest way to know when I'm going to load this up. On YouTube, I will put it in my stories, and I will also post about it as well. You can find me on TikTok. Thank you guys so, 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 so much. Go out there and rock it hard. Sign up for my TikTok marketing class. It's free, and it's happening next week. You guys have a good one.